Hey everybody, Wendy Clinky here with Blue Cat Studio. Today we're gonna do just a quick fun sketch of a coffee cup. Um, and really this is, it sounds silly to say it, an excuse to go live simply for the sake of painting and having fun. You know, some days we just don't have that much time, but we squeeze it in where we can. So I am free handing this. If it's a little funky, bear with me. So literally just did kind of an oval, surrounded it, came down, created the cup, and now I'm gonna do an inner half oval inside to show that my cup is full. Then we're gonna create another sort of partial oval through here, and then coming around, going in front like so. I made it a little large, that's fine. So I started off with just um, one of the pages in my sketchbook where I have got excessive wipe offs basically going on. And if you're wondering why is there a thick rim, well, I'm seeing this kind of as like one of those really thick, like earthenware cups. Of course, I'm super into polka dots this season. Don't ask me why. I have not got a good reason for it, but I love them. So we're just going to do the thing because we can. Maybe a polka dot here because we want polka dots inside, right? Yeah, why not? Okay. So we've done just kind of a quickie sketch and then we could even, well, well, we'll do some more hand lettering or we could hand letter a little here. We'll see how that goes. I'm just doing kind of a letter, a little circle at each terminus point. Boop. Sometimes we just need to play. You know, let's make it not a big deal, right? When you do art like this, you're literally just kind of having fun, messing around, doing the thing. And so the reason I use a background is if stuff peeks through, it looks super cool. If stuff doesn't peek through, well, that's no problem either. So I'm going to grab a little bit of my Bahama Blue because it's just a go-to. I'm going to use gesso instead of white paint because I, I love, I just love the tactile quality of, of gesso. That is often my reason for using gesso. Squeeze out a little bit of brown here, raw umber. And then just grab, I don't know, let's see here. We'll start with our, our bigger guy, flat brush here. And I need to let that dry a little. Well, we'll just work down below. So grabbing some of the blue, pulling it off here, grabbing some of the white gesso, pulling it off, and then a touch of brown. I want to mute this a little bit, get it a little bit more in sort of, a fall, fall shades feel versus super bright and, and peppy. And so just gonna begin to kind of block out around the coffee cup, leaving a little space here and there. Don't even have to have full coverage, but just kind of, you know, more or less giving in that blue background feel. Let's see if I can't get a little better coverage right here over this guy. Boop, there, because you know, I messed up freehanding it, no biggie. And because this is a sketch and I'm not super concerned about the end result, it allows me to play, it allows me to just kind of be informal. So I'm hoping that you also allow yourself to play, kind of have fun, it's very freeing. So I ran out a little bit there. So mixing some more. Again, just a touch of that um, raw umber from Deco Art. It's a nice dark brown color. It's a little bit more earthy than some of the chocolate colors. Just helps tone down that blue. Now you could go with a much brighter blue if you wanted. Kind of hand jotted the word coffee. I'll just kind of, I'll probably just paint over it but keep it so I can see it. And I smudged it. Well, you know what? It's cool. We will fix that. I feel silly. All right, we'll get that back in at some point. Okay. So now we want a little horizon line here. Not that it's necessary, um, but I'm wanting a horizon. So I'm just grabbing some brown and kind of working it right into the paint that I've already got on the brush. And we'll make the horizon line maybe here. Kind of just bringing it across. I'm going to kind of pull down from that line a little bit, pulling it down. 
So I'm going to grab some more of the stuff that we just blended and sort of work it in. Because we really want a mostly, you know, muted, muted light turquoise background. I'm trying to keep it there. So you have a horizon line and it shifts, but it's not so drastic. Oh, you're still drinking your, so we have a Facebook user who says, I'm a drinking coffee, still my morning. Very nice. Now, if you click on the little link that says, you know, um, let DreamYard see your name, then I'll be, I can actually call you by name instead of being like, hey, Facebook user. Small things. All right, I got a ton of paint stuck on this brush, so I'm just going to offload it really quick. Yuck, yuck, yuck. So I can rinse faster. And again, all that offloading that you just saw me do. I did on this page at another time. And that's how I create a lot of these backgrounds. And it's really a wonderful way to just kind of relax and not have to think too much about your art and to try and experiment, right? Because it's a junk page. All right, I'm going to blow dry this just so we don't get any more smudges. Is That's all it took. Now adding a little bit of cadmium yellow from Deco Art Americana. Place that on my palette over here. And I'm going to do an off-white cup. So grabbing the gesso, because again, it gets a very gritty thing, a gritty texture, a little bit of the brown, a bit of the yellow. We're going to just mix, mix, mix. I want it to be a little bit more of a cream color. So there we go. And we'll just kind of Come through and get a base coating there, base coating. And because we've got a lot of yellow background, I'm going to keep it light. It's not going to go full coverage here. And I want some of those words and letters to peek through. This is my typical stock prospectus. And then let's see, we'll get a little bit on the inside. Pupes, just so... on the handle. So now we have a kind of a, a nice flat cafe au lait type of color here. We'll get a little bit on the rim. Again, I've got those, those, those paint pen lines, which is fine. Okay, now that we've just done the rim, I'm going to go with some straight white and just go right over it and kind of create some lines on that rim right into that wet paint. So I'm taking advantage of the fact that that paint is wet and that some of this color is going to, going to blend in. So then we'll take a little bit of that kind of along the top of the cup here, a little on the rim here, a little bit at the kind of near the base, a little on the rim here. And then maybe a touch kind of down the side will kind of just bring a little, little, little smush. Granted, I went kind of right over my polka dots, but that's just going to kind of remind me where I want my stuff to go. Go ahead and offload that paint. What color polka? Oh, let's do the coffee. So now we'll make the coffee. And notice this is, you know, we're not using a ton of different colors here. We're keeping it fairly, fairly within, within a color scheme here. So that's a very light coffee. Who drinks their coffee that, that light? Anybody else pour a ton of milk into their coffee? I used to. That's a little too light for me. So I'm going to add a touch more. I want to actually a little yellow to warm it up as well. So we added the little bit of yellow and then I'm just mixing the brown in. And we'll just kind of bring, bring some of that darkness across. Now notice I didn't do the whole thing. Just doing some of it. A little bit of dark kind of in the corner here. Yeah, I want to say like October 1st was National Coffee Day, or we had a National Coffee Day recently. Okay. But now, because I've got kind of the cream color going on here and I've got some of that brown on my brush, I'm going to add just a little bit of shadow kind of right at the base of the, right at the base of the cup and the saucer where it sits on it. Hey, Carla. Ooh, you like yours black. That's a good way to go. Cause when I quit dairy, I, I was like, well, I don't like any of that other stuff in my coffee. So maybe I'll just quit coffee. All right. So adding just a little bit more 
And it's really weird. I actually been living without coffee for a couple of months and I used to be like the full pot a day addict. I, I'm not sure what happened, but I'm not complaining. It certainly simplifies things a lot. So now we've just added a little shadow there. Now we're not going for like, you know, super fancy here and super artsy. We're just kind of trying to get the base. The base is going here. So we'll add a little, little color to that rim there. Whoops. A little highlight to parts of that rim, the side. It's not quite the rim, is it? Whatever that is, the edge. And again, not super realistic, but just kind of having fun. You had COVID? Oh my gosh. So Carla says that when she had COVID, coffee didn't taste the same. You know, I knew someone who, while she got a negative test, she lost her entire um, sense of taste. And she basically said that she couldn't taste coffee and she couldn't smell bleach. But that was like, you know, in uh, early, early 2020. I can't imagine losing that. So Carla, did you get your, did you get your taste back or did stuff kind of come back or are you still struggling with weird taste things? So because I'm kind of keeping a color theme here, we're just going for a feel. I um, also grabbed a little bit of this just straight up the, what was that again? Bahama blue to do the polka dots. This is just on an old stock prospectus. And I'm really happy with allowing little bits of the background and the print and the underpainting to show through. We're just here to have fun, right? Sometimes you got to relax, just let the paint flow. And it's okay if you're not making like the most amazing art all the time. Sometimes we're allowed to just play. In fact, when you play, that's when you really, you know, start to, I don't know, improve and grow and learn new things and relax and, and take risks. And so often in art, it's really about taking risks. Not just a few things. I, I wiped my brush off, but I did not rinse it. Oh, Carla. So she says, Carla says no smell either. Some stuff is still off, but you're almost back. Well, I'm glad you're almost back. So a little bit of white here. I'm going to just get a little kind of little highlight across that coffee. Got a little too close to the edge there. There you go. See a little bit of white just kind of brushed across the top. In fact, if it's too harsh, you can use your finger to kind of smudge it a little. That gives you that reflection of the coffee. Um, I think we want a little highlight right across the top of this polka dot and we kind of done some highlighting right down along here. Let me bring a touch of the blue into the shadows as well. Yeah, just a few bits. So this is fairly, I mean, it's not quite monochromatic, but it's not terribly, we're not using a wide range of colors. We've got brown, white, turquoise, and a touch of yellow just for, for interest. And I was hand sketched. I wasn't even stressing about, you know, getting the, the shapes right. You can add a little dark here and there, maybe some shadow underneath in, in the mug part here, a little shadow under here. Uh, let's see again, I, and I'm really not rinsing my brush either. I'm just kind of wiping the stuff off and going with it. So we'll add a little highlight kind of along this zone here that makes the cup look brighter. And there you go. Like just a fun, goofy, you know, whatever sketch. I mean, it's even wonky. I didn't really get it quite right. Oh, we got to get our lettering back, don't we? Let's do that. I'm going to rinse my big brush. We'll grab something smaller and do the thing. And while I would normally do black, I'm just going to go with brown because that's what I got. So a little dot and a stroke and a little dot. Boop trying to be even here. Lettering is not my thing. I'm also not any good at coming up with cute quotes and words to go on art. I wish I was. I know some people have that skill and I'm like, wow, I'm not a words person. I don't even think in words. I think in colors. Yeah, Carla, exactly that. This is totally a work time break. I'm actually, Thursdays are school days for me. 
And so this is my lunch break in between classes. And I tell you, after you sit there and do like these heavy duty case analysis, because I'm working on a business degree, um, you're talking about like Amazon's business model and all the things you're sort of like, Ooh, brain fried. Plus we're going off into finance next. So it's very nice to just sit here and be like, I'm just making art. I'm letting my brain relax. This is my true self. All right, Carla. Well, we will see you. Have a great day as well. Thanks for joining me. And there you guys go. Coffee. Have a great day. We've had fun making our cute little simple sketch. Keeping it light. Keeping it easy. No pressure. Playing for the sake of playing. So I really urge you to also play for the sake of play. And, you know, this isn't my best work. In fact, it's nowhere near my best work. But that's that's okay. I'm not here to always create my best work. I'm here to play. I'm here to experiment. I'm here to learn. I'm here to try new things. And when we try new things, that's when good and great and interesting things happen. When we don't get out of our comfort zone and we don't try stuff, we don't improve and we don't take risks, right? I mean, you don't always want to do the same old, same old. You've got to try. Just adding little smudges of the brown in here just to kind of, I'm probably going to overwork this sucker. I should probably stop while I'm ahead, huh? Okay. All right. Well, you got my message. The message is absolutely take the time to play, to mess around and to do, to do things, even if you think it's dumb. But if you still kind of want to do it, then do it. Love you guys. We will see you next time. Have a good one. Bye.